through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 221. Woo! I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our DVD rundown for the mm -hmm. week of January 15th, yes. 2013. Already halfway through January. Yep. Believe it or not, we're we just are flying 120, through. 124th of the way through the year. That's some good math right I there. Know, yeah. It's hard, to, harder to say it than it was to do in my head, <laughs> which is the sad part. Uh, sort of a mixed week, you know. <laughs> math, not English. No. Well, we'll work on that too. <laughs> Remedial school for him. Uh, but you know, it's sort of a mixed week, some interesting stuff, some yeah. interesting special features that I'm looking forward to, yeah, whether that's... the movies are good or not. But you know. <laughs> yeah, that's... at least we got something to look forward to, right? Let's dive right in, though, and start with Taken 2, mm -hmm. the big release of the mm -hmm. week. This is obviously the sequel Your to mother the. will be taken. <laughs> the sequel to the <laughs> Liam Neeson classic. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call it a classic because it is oh, it awesome. Oh, it is. It is. One of the most badass films in recent years, I would say. Especially for Liam Neeson, probably one of his more better oh, roles. Yeah. I think it's the one that really made him an action star. Mm -hmm. I it mean, this then unknown, and then A Team. Was yeah, A Team. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's just been blown up. But um, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, <sighs> this is one of those films that you know you have high hopes for <laughs> after the first one being mm -hmm. so good. The second one again sort of is a step back. Um, not really quite as classic yeah. as the first one. A little bit more formulaic. Yes. In the sense of. And unfortunately, the one. it's only released in one format, really, Blu-ray, DVD, and so on. So it's kind of a bummer that way, but it has some really interesting special yes. features that I'm looking forward to. <laughs> um, first up, you have an unrated cut, which I'm curious to check out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that will make it better, but I'm curious. Hopefully, Hopefully. well, it's got the theatrical cut for those who are fans of that, too. Mm -hmm. But it also has a Black Ops fuel manual and kill counter. Which I'm curious to check out. I mean, he is so badass. I'd like mm -hmm. to learn a few of those tips along the way. <laughs> cha -cha -cha. Like, so I was just gonna watch Taken Two special features and come out of it a lethal weapon. These <laughs> these hands, <Yeah. laughs> license to yeah, kill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you better watch out. Uh, there's also a feature out on the tools of the trade, mm -hmm. which I think you know. Again. Cha -cha -cha -cha. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I'm all for it. And uh -huh, the uh -huh. other one of interest to me is that there's an alternate ending. Not huh. sure if it'll make a big difference, but oh. I'd be curious how that could spin it. Maybe at the end of it, it'll it'll lead into a Taken Three. Uh, I think there Your are mother only, and daughter are going like, to be taken. I think they said essentially that they weren't imagining that there would be one, but it was so successful that I find it hard to believe there. I'm won't kind be. of upset that with the option of the sequel that they didn't go with retaken. I mean, come on. Yeah. Taken two, retaken, or just retaken, just taken two. So about boring. Taken it. <laughs> Take, I like retaken. <laughs> retaken. Took. <laughs> you done got tooked. That'll be the fourth one. <laughs> that would be awesome. I would direct the shit. Out of that. I'm gonna work on that right now. Copyright McGuffin. <laughs> you done uh, got took. Coming to the theaters this fall. Uh, in the more interesting area, one that I've spoken about before, mm -hmm. Merwin season yes. four comes out. BBC this week. show, right? BBC mm -hmm. show playing on PBS in America. Ah, yes, like Downton Abbey. Exactly. Yeah. Shows. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the story of the young Merwin, young Arthur, before he's you know king of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Camelot. Camelot. No round table, etc. Mm -hmm, yet. Mm -hmm. But um, no Excalibur or does Excalibur? Uh, Excalibur is, I mean, comes into play okay. as does you know, like Morgana's rise, yes, stuff okay. like that. You know, Lancelot. All the all the characters come into play They're during the young series. and not fully actual. Right, and they sort of like the whole um, relationship of them all mm. is what's formed in this. Gotcha. This sort of builds to sort of like you know, round table mm -hmm. type times. So I know that, you've spoken highly of the show, so it's one of your favorites. I, I very much enjoy it. Season five just started. I'm Unfortunately, a week before this is released, so that's a shame. It's probably already on Netflix streaming. They've done a really mm -hmm. good job of putting it out there. Mm. Um, you know, I will admit that there is a, a modest amount of uh, filler episodes on the show. They're very enjoyable still, but I will say, and I think I've said it before, mm -hmm. when this show is on, yes, <laughs> it is possibly my favorite show on TV. Like, it is so good when it gets those things that, that phrase, you expect, you know, that like, you know, like when, you know, Morgana goes evil mm, or something okay. like that. Like crucial points in the story. Well, Morgana going bad, like, is something actually, actually new, strangely enough, from The Sorcerer's Apprentice mm, from watching that movie. I know that she was the villain in that movie, so I was like, gee, when they're friends and they're always... I thought you were going to say from, like, Sword in the Stone or, like... I, from, that, that too. Or I from First Night. Yeah. There's, there's any number of sources, but, like, Connery. you know, early days, she's, mm. she's good. 
Okay. And you watch yeah. it go bad in like season one or something like okay. that. And so like you get when you get those moments, it's so satisfying. And hmm. this definitely capitalizes on that. That's good. Um, season four um, is one of the better seasons too. Really? Like the first, it usually does like a two part opener and a two part closer. Okay. And those episodes are usually are they six episode seasons or are they thirteen? Longer? I okay. think. But those first those two parters are usually so strong that hmm. you're just like, oh my god, I can't b- know where this is going. Nice. Uh, in terms of the release, it's it's sort of modest. They got some commentaries which I like. It's a television see. show, so it's hard right. for. Uh, they've got some delayed scenes, some outtakes, and some storyboards and that's pretty much it but the show is so good I if you haven't checked it out again hmm. I highly recommend right, I giving it to it a, my ever long list I, of, I highly recommend giving it a shot and you sure. know I'm a Netflix instant pimp so if it's on streaming I might just one of these nights stay up till 4 in the morning watching yeah. the whole first season no, it's totally worth checking out uh, in terms of uh, recent releases, we have the Woody Allen film of this year. Yes. To Rome with Love is mm-hmm. coming out this year, or coming out today. <laughs> nice. Came out last year. It is year, technically anyway. coming out this yeah. year on DVD. Uh, you know, the film got some mixed response. You know, if this you're one a Woody with Owen Wilson. Uh, I don't know. Were they playing the I authors? I forget. No, 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 no. This no, is no, no, that's... this. I don't remember which one. Yeah, that, that was the one from last year. Okay. Um, no, this is the one with Woody Ball or Woody Allen, Alec Baldwin, uh, Ellen Page, Jesse oh, yes, Eisenberg. Right. Yes, uh, yes, About yes. the like crossing stories. Yes. In Rome. Okay. Um, you know, if you like Woody Allen films, I'm sure you're gonna like that. The thing that kills me is that Woody Allen films tend to be really kind of weak. DVD hmm. releases like uh, yes. A this is not multi-format in terms of its release mm-hmm. and B there are only two special features Con Amore A Passion for Rome which I think sounds interesting if you mm-hmm. like Italy you know it sounds kind of interesting um, but also as a behind the scenes documentary featuring interviews from the cast and crew and that's really it yeah like that's really kind of a shame like yeah I, I think people I, would I love a like, commentary track. You know, he'd be one that'd be really interesting to sort of hear more from. Yeah, I, I wonder if he's just getting up in age and now he's just more focused Maybe. on making the films and doesn't care as much. Maybe about I just that. I don't think he just really has any interest in it. Like I yeah, just I don't think saying, it yeah. registers to him. Yeah, I don't think he cares much about that. The proliferation and merchandising aspect. Yeah, I think he only. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he only focuses on making films at this point. So that's kind of a bummer. But you know, if you like if you like the film, it is definitely coming out. So it's can, it's coming out. Mm-hmm. I I honestly find it hard to really push buying it because of the weak release but you know yeah. I'm, I'd be curious to check out the Con Amore Passion for Rome mm-hmm. I, be, I mean I do yeah. have a passion for Rome you can so always rent it here at Scarecrow Video I probably will be doing just that mm-hmm. save me the extra cash each <laughs> Finally, you know, it's been a while since we talked about one. We've got a Criterion release coming out. Yes. The Man Who Knew Too Much. Yes. Not only Criterion, but Criterion Hitchcock. Boom. Yeah. That's kind it's of... It's a double whammy. Yep. Starring uh, Peter Lohr. Mm-hmm. You know, always a good thing. Peter Lorre, I think. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a solid, solid release. No surprise there. you got an audio commentary from film historian Philip Kemp. Awesome. Uh, you've got a new interview with Guillermo del Toro about it. Ooh. Who, Ah, such an interesting Love guy. That guy. Yeah, such an interesting guy. Still want to hear him talk all the time. Yeah, we've got an extensive interview with uh, director Alfred Hitchcock, conducted by journalist Pia Lindstrom and film historian William Everson. Wow, it's obviously archival interview, yeah. but you know, still very cool. I'd, yeah. I'd love to hear any, you know Hitchcock talk Yo, about totally. film. Like, such an interesting dude. Yeah, and you also have excerpts from uh, the interview of uh, Francois. Truffaut's Ooh. interview from 1962 with Hitchcock. Nice. I think they've done that on previous Hitchcock I think releases, so, yeah. but you know, still great, great. Yeah, if you haven't bought like the entire collections and you're buying individual films, it's nice that they're at least loading you up with all yeah. those things that have existed before, rather than saying, "Nope, you only got that if you yeah. got this other thing." No, so it's it's very cool, and you know, uh, always Criterion's oh, awesome, man. Hitchcock's awesome. Yeah. How could you go wrong with I know. this? Honestly, I think someday what needs to happen, even though there's nothing wrong with Criterion box art, I think Criterion and Mondo need to cross paths and completely cool. dominate the world of yeah. art, art and film. That's a that's a good suggestion. I think you're right about that. They would that. make a lot of money. <laughs> Not yeah. like they either of them need more, but No, they seem to be doing pretty well yeah. for themselves. But Maybe they should make stay some by extra themselves. money. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Cuz us collectors would the Criterion releases would become like $150. Both, well, <laughs> if they could consolidate that, that might save some money for me cuz yeah. I spend a fortune on both of that's them. That's true. Spencer so. so would just have one bill a week rather than two. Yeah, so that would be great. But uh, no, slam dunk really. I would say that's one of the easy ones to pick this week Mm -hmm. for sure Mm -hmm. Um, but you know join us next week as we discuss Jessica Chastain Mm -hmm. in honor of Mama you know lady's been blowing up the last few years as Uh, you will see when we talk about it yeah exactly we don't have to go back far no (laughs) Uh, and as always you can
can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes, we're on Blip.tv, Miro, Roku. Check it and get glue. It's always good on get glue. Uh, leave us some reviews on iTunes, talk to us on social media, mm-hmm. YouTube, wherever. Bug us. Bug us. We, we will like bug it. you back. Yeah. I guarantee I have nothing to do in the middle hours of the day that bug you people. Me too. Yeah. And we'll see you next time. T1000 can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to bite the sun. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.